welcome to the inaugural member spotlight. You're our first our first guest. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. <laughs> hey. So I know that you're a Q Kids teacher, of course, but can you give me a little bit of uh, background on what else you do? I know I, I know you've got the the degree, but can you go a bit more into detail what you what your background is? Wow. Um, let's see. I do many things. Uh, uh, my husband and I are both in theater and such. So I I'm a, I'm an actor. I'm a playwright. I am a uh, spoken word artist. Nice. And of course, a creative writer and author and. Uh, Dancer, choreographer, we do a little bit of everything. Kind of, uh, I don't want to say jack of all trades. You know, you you are given gifts sometimes, but they're not all for you. They're for you to give out to other people too, so they can do their thing. Because I'm I'm like that too. I got all a little bit of everything, and I can't settle on one thing because I think everything interests me. It is, it's it's innate to create. Uh huh. Like that. Yeah. I mean, I saw that you just had this amazing background in dance, theater. And you talked about the voice. And you do singing too, did you say? Yes, we, we do. We are vocalists as well. Okay. And um, uh, we play instruments and such. So, Great. Yeah, it's just a, like a little bit of everything. I could hear the book, and I started writing the book down, and then I saw the characters, and I said, okay, Crunky McBunky from New Girlie Port. Okay, where is New Girlie Port? wherever Crunky McBunky is, McBunky is. I've, I've always loved words. Mm -hmm. I grew up loving words, loving the sound of them. I like the way they roll, they bounce, and I like having fun. You could have a series, basically, because the, they all look the same, pretty much. They have the same features. And I really liked, like the old man. He's in that three-piece vested suit and everything. With that. That's Mr. Sunday Morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Mr. Sunday Morning. And there's a there's a little joke about that because I made him all sharp and everything, and then I said he had to jump off the couch to go to the front door. So he must be vertically challenged a bit. I'm vertically challenged, so it's okay. <laughs> but, yes, so I, I like to do a lot of different characters. My children's characters differ mm -hmm. a lot. So mm -hmm. I have different styles. Do you have mostly, uh, is it mostly people, or do you do also do animals too? You know what, it's mostly people, but I can do animals, and I like to do characters. So, you know, and I like to make inanimate objects real. I think what some of the other teachers might want to know is, like, you said you just, you you, it was, you were listening, and, and it basically wrote itself, but are, were there any challenges when you were, like, thinking, uh, oh, this isn't good enough, or, or um, how do I get everything I need to get down on paper? Did you get anything like that? Any kind of challenges that you came across? You do. I find that I do come across challenges. With Crunky McBunky, for instance, you know, what, what helps me is if I, I think about my target audience. And I think about, okay, I, I also realize that I'm not just writing for myself. If you're writing for yourself, that's one thing. Writing for an audience is something different. So I said, what? What is needed today? I look at what's going on, and this really Crunky McFunky is a book about kindness. So I started thinking. I started thinking about the different scenarios. You know, what are children dealing with? Mm. You know, stuff in the PH group. Mm -hmm. You know, or the, is sharing an issue? Is you know being bullied an issue, or what have you? And I, I kind of go from there. There were no real challenges with this book, except for because really this is one of eight children's books. Nice. And um, I haven't published the other ones because I, I also illustrate, and I'm dropping color, and you know what I'm talking about for all of the other illustrations, and um, that takes a while. But I, I think, you know, just really nailing down what you want to say, what you want to talk about, looking at your audience, you know, what do I want the children to know? And then there's also a trick to teaching them without them realizing they're being taught. Mm. Because once children realize they're being taught, they go click and they turn it off. So you have to kind of, you know, I, I write with that in mind as well. Mm -hmm. I write with that in mind. Okay, what can I say to make the child think they're teaching the adult or whatever, but they're really learning, you know, mm -hmm. you kind of do the psych out thing. Hopefully that answers the question. Okay. Oh, definitely, definitely. And, and I think you brought, you brought up a good point, which I've... One of one of my, I don't want to say it's an issue, but I, I worked with an author, 
And he wrote, it took him like 15 minutes to write the book, but the artwork took me almost like four months to, to complete. And then he gets all the accolades. <laughs> and I'm like, there was so much work that goes into this. You don't even imagine because your, your original drawings might, might be several uh, versions of that, right? Right. And that's what happens. And you're sitting there and you're getting a twist. <laughs> Yes, the artwork does take the time. The books are, are done, and it's like, you know, I, mean, I like to do a lot of detail. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I have to drop the detail to make an end. That's my challenge with a lot of the books, making an end. It's like, make an end. It's, it's done already. It's done. Stop it, you know. That's a good point. I think I think that's a great point because I think a lot of teachers are probably thinking that. I know that I've talked with quite a few that say, you know, you know, I'm not really that great of an artist and I want it to be perfect before it goes out. And so you have that kind of, you know, is it perfect or get it finished? And I think sometimes you just have to just say enough, we're done, let's move on. Because another good thing about that too is you're, you're, um, you're building a, a library and not everybody's stuff is going to be perfect. I mean, you could go back to the same book 10,000 times and you still would find things wrong with it. I mean, you just have to, at some point you have to say, I'm done. Yes, and you know, it's something to look at when you look at those books that are great, like we'll say Dr. Seuss, Ted Easel, Dr. Seuss, if you look at his drawings, they are simple line drawings with a splash of color here and there. He was smart, it's like he didn't worry about where the shadows were, and it's a beautiful book, it's beautiful, you know, mm -hmm. um, you get the point, and really... What you want to make sure of is you want to engage your audience. If you bore your audience, forget it. And make them want more, you know, be excited. So. Does your book end where you're like like wondering what's going to happen next? Or is, like a, or is it just pretty much end? And then it, you would start a new story. It ends, but it always ends uh, when I write my children's books, because I write other genres too. But my children's books, I always try to end it with a lesson, and it's about being kind. This is also a rhyming book because I was all things Dr. Seuss growing up. I mean, I was reading Green Eggs and Ham when I was three years old. By the time I got to kindergarten, I was reading on a third grade level because I was just Dr. Seuss. I love words. I, I'm in love with words. Um, so Crunky McBunk, it basically talks about a situation that he has. And it's, it's a nice little fun rhyming book. It talks about, you know, it ends up with, you know, hey, it's, it's great to be kind. Don't forget to be kind. You will make someone stay, you know, basically. And that's the message I wanted to leave with the children and the, the people who have purchased the book and got it. They said, my, my kid won't put the book down if I read that story one more time. But they're like memorizing. Yeah, that's, that's huge because you, it's like you're saying about teaching. You don't really want them to know that you're teaching to them. And so by doing that in the book, they're learning without even thinking about it. They just like the, the name, the names, and they're, they're saying them in the rhymes. So that's really cool. Yes, like some, honestly, real quick about Crunky McBunky, some of the characters, the names, you have Crunky McBunky, and then you have Mr. Mo Meaner Mo Lipsy Goga, and then you have, um, you have Mr. Pope Peasley, and you have, you know, Miss Bibley with her Bejangle hat. These are things that make the characters <laughs> stand out, and the kids like saying it, you know. It's tongue twister a little bit, but it also helps develop the vocabulary, the tongue, the usage, so that they can actually speak. No, that's that's an added bonus, yeah. Um, so, just, I don't want to go too much into detail about CreateSpace, but I know that yours was published in CreateSpace. Can you just talk about the process? Don't go into too much detail because we're going to have to cover, it'll probably have to be in a whole another, whole another show. <laughs> well, actually, um, when I used, I've used Create Space twice. This is actually the second edition of Conky McBunky. The first one I put out early 2014, and then I put this one out late 2016. Uh, for Create Space, really, you just have to make sure you're formatting it correctly. And, you know, the process was, was fairly easy. You know, once you get your illustrations together, you know what goes on with the illustrations. You know, if there's too much black, this, this is going to bleed through. Don't, you know, um, I went to KDP 
select, and then also they have a children's publish. If you want to publish a children's book, they have that tool. Use that, and I put the book in there, and I was able to also insert my pictures because I illustrated them. But you can, you know, you can drop the pictures in there, and really, it was a very easy. They they preview it. They let you know if, if it's all right, and if something needs to be tweaked, you go ahead and tweak it. But it was fairly easy. They give you the ISBN numbers and everything. I'm not sure if that's answering your question. It is. It is because it is. I think people. What I what I want mostly from these types of member spotlights is to meet the person behind the book to know you know the real the real people. They go through the same yes. problems, the same issues, and they're talented. And we're all talented. And I think people don't. The teachers, I'm not sure. I haven't talked to you know a lot of them about that, but you know I want people to really get charged about this because once you once you hold up a book, you're like, wow, you did that, and it's so it's such a great feeling, and I want these teachers to have that feeling. Yes, and you can do it. It can be done. You know, you can't. You know, it, it's you. You've got to get off the perfect thing. You've got to get off. The, it has to be perfect. It has to be perfect. Yes. Spelling and grammar and formatting, whatever, just finish it. Finish the book. And, you know, I mean, you can read it to your children, read it to some neighbors' kids, you know, get a little bit of feedback, but just get it done because there's someone out there that wants your book. It is a great feeling to see this and then to turn it around in your little picture and your ISBN and you're like, oh, that's me. You know, <laughs> and it, it does feel good. And, it, and it's, a, it's a release and it's okay to put the book out more than once. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I have so many books in there. I know. I had an issue with that at first. I was like, but I already put Okay. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and this one's great. This one's great. Do what you feel you need to do, you know, and just move forward with it. And I'd say, when you asked me earlier about struggles, my struggle would be to make you an end. She said, so like I said, make an end. I'm working on a couple novels now. In fact, I'm working on like four because I can't make an end. You're like my mirror image, really. I have my wife says just pick one thing and finish it, but my my mind's like I said I can do this, I can do this, I, you know I want to do it, I want to do it. But I only got the novel, I got the children's books, I got animation projects, I got all over the place. And I, sometimes I think I don't want to say it's a curse because it's not, but sometimes you're like, oh, why couldn't I just be like a construction worker and go to a job nine to five? But then you realize what you have, right? And that's a gift. And then you got to give that gift. Yes. Yeah. And it's, you, you'll do it. You'll make that deadline. Don't you worry about it. And it's interesting because, honestly, my husband does the same thing. He says, well, let me just focus on this one. And, and it is so much easier, I think, said than done. Because my gears are continuously turning, turning. Turn. And then, you know, you can't force anything. If it's not there, you have to wait for it. For it, wait for it. And that's where you're like, Patience is a virtue. I don't have any, you know, <laughs> but it works out. And yeah, I think a lot of writers go through that. That making it in. That oh my gosh, it's not perfect. Oh my, just get it out. Right. Get it out. I had some wonderful professors at Full Sail University. Shout out to Full Sail. They just, you know, and they really helped me a lot with that. Get it out, and it was fine. And it's it's funny. They're like, it was fine the first three times you wrote it. It's like oh. So. I'm glad you mentioned that. that was, uh, you're seg segueing right into my next question, which was full sale. I saw that you got the uh, congratulations on that. That's that's been a dream of mine to go to art school. And when you when you when I saw that that you had that, I thought how much of that was an uh, effect, effect or effect, <laughs> effect on your um, like were you you were already ar artistic, right? Right. I have been actually I have been writing poetry and drawing since I was like five years old. I started writing poetry seriously when I was eight. And I've I wrote books long before, but you know, it's good to have that paper to go behind it. So I did I I blessed to have gotten my BFA in creative writing uh, for entertainment, which includes, you know, your books, your screenplays, your television writing and all of that. And I was really blessed to learn from industry professionals. They they write for Nickelodeon. They write for CBS and Fox and it, boom, and it's not easy, you know, so <laughs> at all, you know, but you can do it. I put yeah. in a lot of 80-hour weeks 
just getting the homework done, you know, and um, I was able to graduate with honors, which I felt, oh, whew, did help. And in fact, just to put it a little little plainer, when I put Conky McBunky out the first time, it was before I went to school. So I was just starting school, and it was like, put the book out. By the time I got on, I said, I'm putting that out again because I see some new things. I see how I could tweak the manuscript. I wanted to change the artwork. The, the characters looked the same, but I wanted them a little bit softer. I didn't want the hard dark lines. I wanted, and I was able to put it out the way I envisioned it initially. Yes, it had a huge impact, and it has an impact on a lot of things that I do, but I have to back off sometimes because you get a lot of the rules, the industry standard rules, and it's great to know them, but sometimes you know the rules so you can break them. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's what that's what art is. I mean, really, right. it's right. breaking it's like breaking rules and style. and uh, but there's it's, there, there's still and I think people I want people to understand. I mean, not everybody obviously can get go for the BFA, but we talked briefly about Dr. Seuss and how simple his artwork was, and I, I want people just to get into that habit of um, just yes. draw, doing stick figures just to get something done on paper. You can always take those stick figures to you know, uh, other sites, I'm not going to mention, well, Fiverr.com is one. I've never used it, but Elance, all those types of places you can get artwork done. So I don't want, I think it's great what you did and that you saw a new perspective on everything you've done, which is great. Uh, but people don't really need to have the BFA, but it's but it's also helped you, So which is uh, great. It's, it's nice to have, and I've also been an art teacher, over the years, and I would I would tell my students, it's fine. Make a stick figure with a hat on the side. It does not. You don't have to do all this elaborate stuff. Just tell your story. I'm gonna read some quotes that you you wrote. I think these are just beautiful quotes. One is you said, "Everyone has a story. Everyone is unique. Take time to hear another's heartbeat, which is beautiful, and you will hear the rhythm of their story. It's up to you to tell it respectfully." Can you? Can you talk a little bit about that? I believe that there's so much to tell, and you never know what another person has gone through or what they're feeling. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, I think it is, when I say tell it respectfully, do a little research. Look at, don't just take it from your opinion or what you think it should be. These are people just like you and me and everything, and their stories can be so tender. Some of them have gone through horrible abuses. Some of them have gone through, you know, it's, that quote just encompasses so much. It's hard for me to put it into a few, but really you can when you listen. Like if you're sitting there, you know, sometimes I've, I've, I've gone into a restaurant and you I'm not eavesdropping but you can hear like some of the elders talking and you can feel they can almost take you where they were their heartbeat you can hear their heart you can hear you know and sometimes I'll pull a character from that I won't take their their story but it helps you build tell it respectfully don't just you know you have to research you know before you blurt things out you need to have some background on whatever it is if they're from Louisiana, what happened in Louisiana in 1959? And then I'm going to, and this one just hit me too. I mean, <laughs> that's why I said I have to do a part two on you. This, this one just, okay. this was, this was, this was great. This is, if I spill paint on my shoes, I'll add color where I walk, which was just amazing line. Life is a series of experiences, adventures, and moments in time. Some are real, some are wanted, others are fantasized and memorials, memorialized excuse me, in lucid imagery. But that first line was like, if I spill paint on my shoes, I'll add color where I walk. That was just so profound. I mean, it's just like, wow. It hit me like a ton of bricks when I saw that. <laughs> I thank the what above for the words, yes. Um, yeah, I, I do feel that, especially... I know that's on my art website, I'm pretty sure, because I, that's the way I feel. It's its like my art runs through me, and if I did, if I spill paint on my shoes, then I will. I'm going to walk gracefully, I'm going to make some design, I'm going to make, you know, some paths and things. Um, and really, I think everybody has paint on their shoes. 
<laughs> honest, I really do. I really feel that way. And I feel that sometimes they just don't know all their colors. Yeah. And sometimes it's up to the artist to bring them those colors to show them, boy, you are walking in chartreuse. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know, so that, that's where I am, you know. Yeah. And I feel like if I, if I paint a large canvas, you know, I'm... I'm I'm touching something, I'm touching someone. You know, I paint from inside, but I also paint what I feel. Mm -hmm. What I see, like when I, when I write, I like to write realistic fiction. You know, and that same thing with my with my artwork. You know, um, that's all I have to say about that. What software you used uh, well, when you write yeah. the book? Because people are thinking about that too. Okay, for, for writing, for just writing my stories, I use Word. I cool. use Microsoft Word and, you know, just do the formatting on there. You know, I, I use Microsoft Word for that. Uh, that's all I use for writing, actually. Unless I'm writing a play or something like that, then I use Final Draft or Scrivener. But other than that, Word. All the way, Microsoft Word. Um, as far as an art, um, Art, the software for the art. I have used Photoshop before, which I can't, I don't have it right now, but I am part of uh, a group called Sketch Club, and they have fabulous tools. And so I use Sketch Club. I use Sketch Club to actually illustrate Crunky McBunky. And uh, yes, yeah, Sketch Club, it's, it's basically on your, on your iPad. It's Sketch Club, and you can do artwork, and you can share it with other people, but then also you're able to export it and import and everything they have they have fabulous tools sketch club working quite well um, but i do a little old school i like to sketch on my regular old number two pencil my needed eraser and a sketch pad and once i get it the way i would like it because i can draw digitally as well but i like the old school i like the hands-on i was born sometime in the 60s and um, <laughs> I scan, I'll scan when I draw, and then I'm able to put it in the app and draw color. And you're, you're sharing some information about software. I'm going to share also might help you too, is there's a simple app on your phone called, it's from uh, Evernote. It's called Scannable. It's amazing. It, 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 it'll, it'll, it'll kind of guess where the boundaries are. It'll set it up. It'll straighten it out. Yeah, it's great. It's called Scannable. It's free. When I get bigger, <laughs> is uh, I have like no original artwork aside from my original characters to show them. And so by, by putting on paper first, you have original sketches and uh, that you can sell at shows or just have you know on your walls or whatever. With digital, you can't do that unless you get digital prints, and it's just not the same thing. But I've actually, I've actually. Um, I don't think I have it here, but I had, I had uh, one book, and I didn't have a mouse or a, a a Wacom tablet, so I just used my fingers on a touchpad, and I drew, I drew the entire thing with my two fingers, and people are like, "What?" I think you inspired me in so many different ways, and I. But even more so, knowing that you went to art school and you and you focused on writing, and the artwork is before art school, it just bl it blows me away that you're that talented before art school. I, I have to say, I really. I'm blessed, and I, I thank God, really. Because, yeah. I mean, I do, I, I, you know, you have to have a degree of discipline and motivation and everything, and uh, most of the time, as a, as a writer and an artist, I'm draping over furniture somewhere. It's because I'm, I'm annoyed. Oh, I don't like the way that's coming out. Or, Why isn't this sentence working? Um, foiled again by an and. You know, it's not... It's not easy, but once you, but it doesn't have to be so difficult that you're just, uh, just make an end to it, figure out what your story is, find your character, what does your character want? My character wants this carrot, and he can't get it because there's a bigger bunny hoarding it, yeah. that really belongs to him, and yeah, exactly, 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 that's what you gotta do. <laughs> I call her my sister. 
And she's also in theater. She's a, a playwright and a poet and a writer. And she's doing big things all over the place. And I can't say certain things around her because I have labeled her a dialogue jacker. And she goes, I am a dialogue jacker. Mm. That's the dialogue. I'm like, you can't have that. And so she, if I tell her she can't have it, she's like, okay. Yeah. But if I don't catch it, it's in a play. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So I said, you can't have it, but um, sure. I mean, I think it's good that we feed off of each other. And you get, you know, ideas. Everybody's ideas are different. You know, um, go with what you have. Uh, write it out. Like I said, I can't, I can't say it enough to make an end to whatever it is. Even if you think it's crummy, make an end to the crummy. And then go back and look through it. But if you never make an end, and that's this is another thing I always tell writers and people who say they would like to write, you cannot be the writer and the editor because this happens and you don't get anything done. Mm. Be the editor later. Just write it out. Yeah. And I'm talking to myself too because I am the, I edit text messages, okay? So yeah. <laughs> it's like just write. So, you know, but don't tie your own hands. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. So I'm going to wrap it up, but I want you to, uh, I will post your uh, li- your links. And then what we'll do is we'll have your website and I'll post all the those four. I think you gave me four links. Actually, it may be online, but not in the stores. But well, the, I've had people who wanted the books in the stores and Barnes and yeah, Noble. Yeah, they can do that. They can do that, yeah. Yeah, they're like, oh, we'll get it. Where's the, you know. Yeah, uh, so yeah, like, cool. Well, that's good. I'll, I'll leave that in there. And um, thank you so much. I mean, it, it seems like uh, I have a new friend. <laughs> thank you. I feel like I have a new friend, too. I'm happy. And make sure you put together your author page and put it in that thread. I don't want to be the only person there because you definitely have a book. So, and put that in there. I want people to think that I don't want this group to be about me. I want it to be, you know, boom, 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 boom. Well, thank you so much. You did a great job. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye-bye.